Okay, we are now good to good to go. So I'll just start with uh, uh, an attendees list. So I've got Carol Hall. I've got um, Jim Woodworth in uh, duplicate. We've got Derek Greger, town engineer, Martha Keneally, uh, Ed Ciccarello, Brian Biggs, Ann Hartman, Judy Keene, Rob O'Connor, Kevin Sullivan, Tom Carson, Bruce Boxstall, and then we have somebody on a cell phone, 860-878-0367. Uh, Not sure who that is. If you wanna uh, identify yourself, that would be great. So we have proper attendance today. And Peter, I'm Bruce, not Hall. Oh, I'm sorry. I called you. Uh, it's all right. Hall. You know, no there's problem. a lot of carols in the world. That's true. That's true. Okay, let's uh, let's get rolling. Rolling here. Chris Trazik is also um, entering uh, the meeting. Okay. Um, this is meeting number 23 of the Weathersfield uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee. Today is Thursday, March 18th of the year 21. Um, we just went through attendance. So I think I, uh, I have everybody uh, identified for the record. Um, tonight's agenda, um, start off with our notes from our last meeting of February 25th. Uh, we're gonna try and wrap up. I apologize. I did not get a chance to uh, list the recommendations for bus shelters. So we'll have to do that at our next meeting. But tonight we will uh, talk about bicycle parking and off road trails in the community existing and proposed. We'll update everybody about uh, the various other things that are going on related to uh, bicycling and pedestrian activity. Uh, we'll open it up for any other business. And then our next meeting date is April 8th. Uh, we're going to have guests at that meeting. Um, Derek has been working closely with a group of uh, UConn engineering students. We gave them a host of uh, intersections and street sections, and they are going to be coming back with um, some preliminary design plans and some engineering costs for what they think are uh, appropriate solutions to some of those um, locations in town. So please uh, put that on your calendar. It's part of their senior uh, project and I think will be interesting for everybody to participate in that. Um, let's start off with a discussion of the meeting notes from the February 25th, uh, 21 meeting. Are there any uh, comments on that? We specifically talked about the bike route recommendations here in town. Okay, no, no comments for anyone on that. Any changes? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, once again, a refresher, uh, all of the information related to this committee's work is available on the town website, uh, sections one through nine, uh, and the various presentations from all the meetings, the meeting notes and the meeting agendas are uh, posted on the, um, on the website for anyone who wants to refresh their memory. Uh, just a refresher at our last meeting, uh, as I said earlier, we talked about uh, bicycle routes in town. Uh, we broke those bicycle routes into local streets, state routes, multi-use paths, and then a series of recommendations as related to some of the local elementary and middle schools. We had uh, 27 uh, local streets identified. We had six state roads that would be impacted. Uh, we recommended three multi-use paths, and we had uh, 19 small stretches of local streets uh, that would be impacted uh, in proximity to the uh, local school system. Um, here's where we are in the process. So tonight, the, the three main things we wanna talk about are uh, bicycle parking locations. Um, as I said, I didn't get to the bus shelter recommendations. We'll do that at the next meeting. Off-road trails. And then we're gonna start talking about uh, getting into the, the final stages here of how we want to engage the public again uh, as we begin the process of getting the plan back in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission and get it officially uh, finalized and adopted by the town. Once again, a refresher, here's our prioritization criteria, A, B, and C. As we go through these recommendations, we envision having them listed with uh, 
at least the highest priority projects that we want to implement. So as we talk about the recommendations tonight, please jump in and let us know if you think certain recommendations are more important than others. Um, these are the uh, criteria that we will be looking at. Uh, if there are safety uh, improvements, uh, if the recommendations are equitable, uh, we also have to keep in mind if they're feasible in terms of how, how easily implementable they are, um, whether they piggyback on existing programs or whether it's a whole new initiative. And then obviously we need to take a look at what the costs are related to that. So let's get right into the um, recommendations. So the first few slides uh, will be specific to uh, bicycle parking uh, recommendations. As you can see, um, through some of our previous work, through some of the grants that we received, some of these are already done, but I wanted to at least have them on here so that the record reflects uh, that these are new, um, new, new bicycle parking locations and they were funded um, through some of our previous efforts. Um, the, this, the work tonight, um, I wanna just uh, thank, thank Kevin Sullivan. Kevin did a lot of work behind the scenes, provided me with a bunch of lists and recommendations, which if I've attempted to incorporate into these recommendations tonight. So Kevin, if, um, if I fumble with some of these recommendations, please jump in and, and clarify for me uh, if I properly interpreted um, your, your work tonight. So um, let's jump uh, right into it. So these are in no particular order geographically or otherwise. So um, these deal with uh, commercial locations, they deal with public locations, they deal with parks, so they're kind of uh, all over the place. But um, And this is reflective of the work that we did some time ago and also reflective of the public input that we heard throughout the process. So I'll start obviously with number one. Um, so uh, there's no bicycle parking up at the uh, Stop and Shop Plaza up on the corner of Berlin Turnpike and Jordan Lane. So that is a recommendation um, to, to carry forward. Uh, and many of these uh, shopping centers probably should have more than uh, one location uh, for bicycle parking, given uh, the size and the types of businesses that are uh, existing in those shopping centers. So once again, as we've had in the past, just jump in if you have a question or you have a strong feeling about that. Uh, Number two and number three are both uh, state of Connecticut facilities here in town, the Department of Labor and the Department of Corrections. I think both of those are uh, without uh, parking for their employees and or their visitors. So we're adding those and have identified those. Uh, we were successful in installing several uh, bike racks at the Pitkin Community Center. We've got uh, two locations up there. so. Uh, obviously, they've been identified as having already been done. Number five, uh, the ShopRite Plaza on the north end of the Silas Dean Highway at the corner of Jordan Lane. Uh, once again, uh, potentially, there should be se several uh, bike racks at that location. Uh, there will be a bike rack incorporated into the uh, new restaurant that they're building in the pad site, which is about to get started. So we were able to get them to agree to put a bike rack as part of the new uh, improvements there. So there'll be um, one, at least one in that plaza when that building is uh, completed. Peter, can I just ask a question? I'm, I'm sure. still on number one. Sure. <laughs> it says Berlin Turnpike. From our last meeting, I was under the assumption that we were not encouraging bike riding on the Berlin Turnpike. Well, this that stop and shop is on that part of the Berlin Turnpike that is a little bit more uh, on the Jordan Lane side, which is a little bit more amenable. We do have, um, I think we did recommend that the Jordan Lane uh, area of the Berlin Turnpike uh, have, is okay. All yeah, right. as it connects, as it connects to Hartford. So, but the other okay. part of the Berlin Turnpike, we were, um, we were more up in the air about that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Peter, that particular stop and shop already has a junky rack, just an FYI. Where, whereabouts is that, Kevin? It's uh, in between the stop and shop and whatever store it's adjacent to. Okay. It's up underneath, up underneath their roof. Okay. 
nice spot. It's just a crappy rack. All right, so maybe upgrades are, it didn't show up on our inventory. Um, so we'll have to add that to the, the existing uh, inventory that we have. Okay, uh, Cove Park, uh, obviously we've uh, installed two at Cove Park. We have one down by the warehouse and then we have another one up closer to the Solomon Wells house. Uh, there's the other one, sorry, right below it. Solomon Wells house at Cove Park. So uh, those are the two that were installed through the grant. Number eight, um, we've been discussing with both the Mer Main Street Creamery and Heirloom Market about getting some bicycle parking uh, at both of those locations. Pretty heavily used by, by cyclists, but do not have any official designated parking there. Uh, I think uh, incorporating something up over at the Putnam Park uh, office building uh, would be great, um, particularly in support of their restaurant and their employees. Uh, we do have parking now in the rear or the side of the Keeney Center as part of the grant. So that's been done. Um, I'm not sure how um, a bike rack would fit in with the, you know, the historical ambiance of the Web, Web Dean Stevens Museum, but maybe something incorporated into a, a less obtrusive location would be a good idea. Um, down on the south, more on the south end of Main Street, Charles Restaurant was able to install one as part of our previous grant as well. Probably make, make some sense to um, get some parking in the center of Main Street, uh, both at maybe on the Village Pizza side of Main Street uh, and maybe somewhere uh, on the Lucky Lou's side of Main Street. Uh, we have two um, on the Broad Street Green now as part of the a part of the grant. Uh, at some point, maybe down uh, at the Beaver Brook uh, Park down on Spring Street, there is a uh, pot of money that will be available to see the uh, both Spring Street and the Beaver Brook Park uh, improved. So there will certainly be an opportunity as part of that project, maybe to incorporate uh, some bicycle parking there. Uh, it was suggested that uh, we work with uh, the Ocean State Job Lot Center to get a to get some parking there. Also at the post office on Beaver Road, uh, the Max Bebo's Plaza on the Silas Dean Highway. Several businesses in there, so quite possibly there could be multiple multiple um, locations there. Uh, Jim, I don't know if you have bicycle parking now at, on the wood parcel, but um, the wood well, parcel. I made, I made a, a log with slits in it, and I installed some bolts that you could attach your lock to. I installed six bolts, and four of them were stolen, so it's a little iffy at this point. <laughs> but and the log needs, needs to be bigger too, but. Uh, and then there's a couple, there's a post, this post with a sign on it is, is usable. Um, but uh, yeah, so we need, uh, we need more, but I kind of like the rustic if we can make it happen. Sure. And work. <clears throat> okay. Um, there's obviously the size of the Weathersfield, Weathersfield Shopping Center uh, would uh, probably um, suggest that there are a couple of different locations within the, the shopping center and maybe as well as in uh, some of the uh, out parcels such as Panera. Um, Marshall's Plaza doesn't have any bicycle parking, potentially a couple there. Coughbrook Shops is a trend here. None of our shopping centers have any bicycle parking. Uh, so potentially a couple at uh, Coughbrook Shops as well as some of the out, out parcels such as chips. Uh, I don't believe there's any bike parking at Millwoods Park, either by the uh, Little League fields or out on some of the soccer field locations. Um, there are There is some bi bicycle parking in the main uh, part uh, near, the, uh, near the pond, near the, near the pool there, but not in the outlying uh, locations in the park. I think there's a rack right next to the Wolf 
uh, nature center, the Wolf Center. Yeah, yeah, nature center. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's one there, and I think there's one um, a little farther in um, by the by the uh, pool, the pond building. Yep, there's there's actually a pretty big wreck over by the pond. Uh, 18 parking down at the 1860 reservoir. Uh, we did install parking uh, at two of the Wilkes farm parcels on Thornbush and also on Willow Street as part of the grant and installed benches as well. There is uh, on the north section of Old Reservoir Road, there's a basketball court and an open space um, town open space facility uh, that might uh, be worth having some bicycle parking there. We did install a couple of racks at the Farms Village playground on Cedar Street as part of our last grant. We also installed one down uh, along the Heritage Way uh, Wintergreen Woods near Eagle Drive. Um, uh, in terms of the neighborhood shopping area where D and D market and Leo's pizza, I think that would be a good location, particularly for the neighbors who might want to ride their bikes, do a little shopping. Up on the North end of Wolcott Hill road, the little shopping center where Savizio's uh, is uh, at the corner of Wolcott Hill and Jordan lane. I'm not sure if it's called the dairy Mart, but the little, um, convenience store on Knott Street in that neighborhood. Might be worth having a, some bicycle parking installed for the, for the neighbors. We did install one at the police department headquarters as part of our grant. And then I don't believe there's any bicycle parking at uh, the Connecticut Department of Motor Vehicles. You have to use the motorcycle parking signpost. There you go. Uh, and then wrapping up the recommendations for bicycle parking, um, First Church on Main Street, Trinity Church on Main Street, and then uh, up on the north end of Main Street where the commercial businesses are, so where the La Noche's restaurant is, that little cluster of, um, of shops on Main Street. Um, I didn't list all the churches in town, but it kind of goes maybe without saying that probably would make sense to work with some of the other churches in town uh, to factor in some parking uh, at their locations. And then lastly, as part of our policy recommendations, uh, it, it, it was recommended that we work with the Planning and Zoning Commission to incorporate specific bicycle parking requirements into the zoning regulations so that future developments uh, are required based on the type of development that it is to incorporate parking uh, into their plans. We have uh, been able to um, convince developers to add bicycle parking with some of our recent developments uh, that have been approved since this group has been in place. And we've been very lucky, lucky with that, but uh, we've been <clears throat> excuse me, doing that without actually having a regulation. Um, so that might be something that the bike walk group takes on and initiates um, and approaches the Planning and Zoning Commission um, sooner than later to maybe take a look at what other towns are doing and then come up with a specific requirement for uh, bicycle parking in future developments. But as I said, we have been able to do that so far without a lot of uh, trouble. Uh, the development community seems to be more open to that. Uh, the Borden project has an entire storage room uh, for their tenants where they can park their bicycles um, and it was incorporated into the plan without us uh, even asking. So um, things have turned around a little bit in that regard, but it should probably be an agenda item uh, for the group going forward in the near future. Peter, what about uh, um the ball fields that are adjacent to Keisha Farm. And just- uh, uh, The Highcrest ball fields there? Yes, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. 
there's bicycle parking at Highcrest, but you're, I, I don't think there's anything on the lower, yeah. the lower fields. Yeah. One of these days, the Keisha Farm too, but we'll hold off on that one for a while. Yeah, yeah the, <laughs> the jury, the jury is still out on that one. So, but whenever yeah. that, whatever happens there. Did I miss others that uh, come to mind? Uh, Kevin, did I miss any that you might've had or is any, can anyone else think? Uh, of what about others. Standish Park? Was there anything on Standish Park? They do have by the playground. They have a big, an old style um, bike rack there. Is that close to the school or close to Mikey's place? It's right by Mikey's place. How's about the other one that's closer to the school? Is that just in Pinjum School property? Over where the tennis courts are, that side of the park? Yeah, that side of the. Uh, the park. There's a lot nope. of people who play tennis, a lot of people right. who are there doing baseball. Yep. What about that field they play flag football on? Where is that? Over um, like off Water Street? It's near the senior. Yeah, I don't know the name of the street. I don't know the name of the park. Where would you say that again? It's, it's, it's where off, they, off Butler Street. It's like over, it's, there's senior housing. It used to be a school in the back. Right off Route 3. Right off Route 3. Yeah, I know what you're talking Water about. Water and Butler. Yep. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of sports. I mean, thinking of kids. Oh, the sports. There's Fuller, a ball field. Yeah. Fuller field. Fuller Fields. Yeah, Fuller Fields. Yeah, that's what it is. Need there's a, a bike lot of kids rack for the cars over yeah, there. People, okay. a lot of sports over there. Oh, okay. Peter, uh, Rob O'Connor was really the one tracking uh, bike parking locations more than me. Rob, okay. you got anything? Um, I was trying to like, compare the list I made, but Sandish Park was the one because I, I, I was thinking like like Carol mentioned, like toward the BO, the Board of Education, yep. between the Board of Education and the tennis courts and the, and the basketball courts. Yeah, I think that's a really good have something there. Yeah. Um, Weathersfield Academy, I don't know whether they would have even to have some hoops for people that wanted to ride up there. The Arts Academy? Yeah, the Arts Academy. Okay. Maybe, and then um, Hanmer Park, maybe just one or two hoops for people who were like with those with those benches. And then I had written down the firehouse. Like I, I think that's, even though that the Charles has those two racks, if there was some way to to cut off some space, like actually in the parking lot or else in the front of the firehouse for, for people that are just kind of like with those shops there and the restaurants and just the increased traffic. And the community garden back there. And the community yeah. garden, right? Like that, like even back there might be a nice, because you could walk to those other places from there. Yeah. Uh, Peter, can I ask? Uh, can I ask Rob? Uh, Rob, what was your criteria when you started to select locations, other than, you know, being on a bike route and a lot of popular, a lot of people? Is there anything other than that? Some of, the, I mean, some of the spots just from, you know, it's like you try to observe, like the old, like where do people, where do people tie their bikes to a tree or the poles or whatever to try to avoid it. But I, I think, like especially the main street shops. I mean, just from from personal experience and just from watching people come to, you know, village circa the, the, the drum roll roasters. I spoke to him last year and, and I, I was talking to him and three people pulled up with their bikes and just dropped them in front. So it's like, I think you try to, you know, the, it, I think it's just basically where people, some of it's like put it and see whether people will come to them. <laughs> and I, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to tell, but um, try to just do some, predictive stuff and then just a, you know some observations of where people are, are putting their bikes to okay any other thoughts out there any from anyone else that we missed um just you know uh, on the point about main street I, you know and i'm sure it's come up before but once that Putnam Bridge is open, we can expect, I would, I would expect a lot of day trippers coming over from Glastonbury. And, and so the more bike parking, the better all on Main Street. 
So the community connectivity grant that we received uh, had a also had a pot of money in there for um, bicycle parking. So uh, hopefully a lot of the locations on Main Street can be um, factored into the, um, you know, utilize those funds. So we can maybe tick off a lot of these on, on the list. So, and I've talked to a bunch of the property owners and they all seem very uh, receptive to adding some bicycle parking. So. Peter, I didn't see on that first list and maybe I'm wrong. Is there a bike rack at the Cove? Yes, there's one by the, uh, in between the Cove Park interpretive sign and the um, Cove Warehouse. Okay, okay. It's actually a pretty big, it's two, it's four hoops overall, Judy. Peter, is there any, is there any near where the farmer's market is? There's one down in the back by the um, parking lot, but I, I think there maybe should be some up by the, by the building itself. So I think that's a good, that's another good one to add. When you go to locate it, check with the uh, farmer's market people. Yes. Peter, can you explain a little bit what the thought is on um, uh, whether or not this would be, you know, I'm, I know funding will come at a later date, but in terms of how, what you think, will, will we approach private businesses that are identified in this list or churches or government buildings and say, would you consider putting a bike, pack, a bike parking here? Or is it something that we would expect to fund through grants or whatever? I think it'll be a, a combination if you know we get new businesses coming to town and we have a regulation then there's that's certainly one way to do it uh, as we get grants there's usually a matching requirement so we could share the costs you know with those businesses that are interested or uh, as we've done with recent grants we've been able to cover the costs a hundred percent so the charles restaurant actually i shouldn't say that i he and he had his installed whereas the others we had uh, the town forces install them. So I think, you know, we can use a variety of techniques and if we can, you know, make our dollars stretch a little far farther. And fortunately, those hoops aren't that really that expensive when you think about it. Um, and, you know, with some concrete, it, it really isn't, isn't, they aren't too bad to have installed, so. Peter, do you have an, do you already have an idea that you're going to be putting mainly those hoops or you have a variety of uh, bike uh, racks? I think we, we've been trying to, you know, keep that same style that says historic Weathersfield with the hoops, the hoop uh, the style um, seems to be the preferred simple um, way of, uh, of doing it. So, but we're certainly open to uh, other possibilities, the more, effective bicycle parking we can get in, you know, the better off we'll be. And we, won't, we don't necessarily have to be that rigid, particularly if developers are looking to do it on their own, their own nickel, we'll probably have to be a little more flexible. But if they're public parking, I think we'll continue to use the historic Weathersfield designed hoops. Peter, one last idea for Main Street um, would be uh, Fresh Grange and the synagogue side? Okay, got those, yep. Okay, um, I'm prepared to move on if, if we've, um, we've talked enough about this one. Okay. Um, let's move into a discussion about trails. Um, so some of these, most of these are existing trails and then some are uh, new ideas. So I'll try and, um, Kevin, this is with a bunch of these, I think you're gonna have to jump in here and uh, help, help me out a little bit. Um, but let's uh, see where this goes. Uh, so uh, the Cove Park, trail that's associated with the, uh, uh, and the other thing is, I think each one of these recommendations, particularly with the existing trails, 
are going to have commentary about what the specific improvements need uh, need to be. I haven't uh, gotten into that um, yet with uh, these recommendations. I just really wanted to start with a list, but yeah, some sections of the heritage, particularly this one at Cove Park, uh, there's, there's some drainage issues um, that need to be taken care of. So each one of these recommendations will have a, a list of specific things that uh, either need to be uh, better maintained uh, or improved upon. So uh, that'll come in the next um, iteration. But um, we, from the map we did, there was a lot of that kind of commentary. So uh, we'll keep that in mind. So this uh, first one, Cove Park, it's the uh, portion of the, uh, the Heritage Way Trail that runs along the uh, south side uh, of the cove. The second one is the trail that runs along the uh, entrance to the cove under the interstate. And it's been suggested uh, that that trail be fully extended out uh, to the uh, edge of the Connecticut River. It stops um, short of going all the way out uh, to the river. So we are uh, going to recommend uh, recommend that. And then this, this section also would lend itself to a series of additional interpretive signs that talk more about, you know, uh, the cove itself, what you're looking at as you look over, you know, into the rest of the cove, uh, you know, the more of the natural environment down there. So that whole area really could be enhanced uh, much, much more effectively and, and taken better care of. And that road has those gullies in it under the bridge that uh, represent, they're like tank traps there. And then that road kind of uh, noses into the, into the uh, levee as the, as the uh, river uh, drops more uh, sediment on top of it. And so you have this mud thing at the end. So if you could uh, fix that, that'd be great. <clears throat> but that is actually a safety hazard down there. Yep. Okay, number three, uh, it's the uh, trail portion uh, of the Heritage Way uh, behind and through uh, the Charles Wright School. But that needs some work as well. Uh, number four is the section of the Heritage Way that runs to the east uh, or backside of Wintergreen Woods behind the high school. Uh, the next one is actually, uh, there, are two, there are two trails that run through Wintergreen Woods, uh, the red trail and the blue trail. So we've separated those two trails out. So Peter, isn't there an organization that m kind of maintains Wintergreen Woods? I. I'm not aware of, I, there, there's a, there was an Eagle Scout that recently uh, redid the uh, map kiosk. Um, I don't know if the Scouts are maybe the group you're talking about, but I, I'm not aware. Uh, Kathy Bag, I'll talk to, I can talk to Kathy Bagley about that. Did, do you have any hints as to who that group is? No, I just, for some reason, I thought there was a group and I, you know, when I went through the trails this past winter, um, there was a lot of very creative artwork on a lot of the trees marking the trails. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you would call it graffiti, but it seemed like it was planned all the way around. Um, so yeah, if we could check with Kathy, that would be good. Were, were they color coded with red and blue or a variety of colors? Uh, it was things like be happy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Don't let COVID get you down. <laughs> okay, I got you. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Uh, Folly Brook. So this is, an, these are, I've kind of broken in the, rather than get into individual block by block sections. So uh, everything south of there along Heritage Way, uh, I'm calling that Folly Brook South. So that stretch also uh, has some drainage issues. It has some other issues. They're doing utility work down there and um, you know, uh, there's an opportunity maybe to uh, get some of those improvements done as part of that utility work uh, as they are working out there. So that's kind of classified as Follybrook South. Um, 
and there's a whole bunch of uh, related trails uh, in Millwoods Park. So you've got the stretch uh, of the Heritage Way that comes through uh, Millwoods Park. That could be obviously much more uh, carefully delineated so that you know you're going, you're staying on the Heritage Way as you go through the parking lot and through the rest of the park. Um, you've got the yellow trail in Millwoods Park. Uh, there is a there is a master plan for Millwoods Park and it recommends a new trail that runs out parallel to the Gulf Brook. So that would be, uh, that could be a future project to work on. Kevin, you can jump in here uh, if, if I'm not properly characterizing these recommendations. Uh, and then there's the portion of the trail that comes in from the entrance on Maple Street. You've got the section of Mill Woods that uh, comes in through Meadowgate Road. You've also got the red trail at Millwoods Park. A anything on any of those that anyone wanted to add or did I miss anything? Okay. Um, Doing good. So behind Emerson Williams School, uh, Western Boulevard, there's a bunch of public right-of-way known as Harvard Street. Uh, that was also recommended in the Safe Routes to School report. So that would make an ideal connection to Western Boulevard, which would get you all the way up, I believe, to Knott Street. Or not, uh, is it Knott Street or is it? Um, in any event, um, so uh, just, not. yeah, it is Knott Street. So um, there's a couple of street sections that could just easily be uh, in refined a little bit and you would have a nice cut through all the way down to the school. Um, we already talked about the Winter Green Woods Trails. That's a duplicate. So num number 15 is a duplicate. Uh, 16. Uh, that one's maybe not quite a duplicate. There's another segment that goes up towards uh, Bell Pond behind, uh, uh, I forget what it's called on Maple Street, there's a uh, senior center. Handicap center. It's handicapped yeah. and actually that trail ties into the, either the yellow or the red, ta red trail in Millwoods. So right. it's actually just an access trail. Okay. Is that the last report? Yes, that's, what, yeah, that's the report. one, Carol. Right. So that's a different one than the Maple Maple Street Trail? It's a different entrance. Okay, all right. I'm gonna have to get my uh, feet dirty and traipse around in there, get, get all these things dis distinguished. Okay. And uh, Wintergreen Woods there may actually be the little spur off of Western Boulevard that gets you across the little brook there kind of like a culvert uh, over to the actual Wintergreen Woods trails. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, where is Winter, Where is Western Boulevard? Sorry, I can't place it. It's on the other Behind side. Of Emerson Williams. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, got you. So the Western you. entrance to Wintergreen, Wintergreen Woods. Okay, um, we've incorporated, although it's it's city of Hartford, we've incorporated the uh, southern section of Good, the Goodwin Park trail system. Uh, the Web Dean Stevens has a trail that runs um, out through the back and comes out into the neighborhood back there. Behind the Keeney Memorial uh, and connecting over to the Butoff Williams house. There is a trail back there. Uh, the wood parcel obviously has its uh, associated trails. Jim, are those trails individually named or are they just the wood parcel trails? Yeah, so there's a little loop, but I haven't named it differently. Um, and we we're making efforts to make that an accessible trail. And I was hoping maybe to find a Boy Scout to put down some more stone in the 
certain places and so forth. And I, I haven't actually done that, but we are going through an environmental review team review. And I don't know if they will have anything to say about trails, but, but anyway, uh, it doesn't have a different name at this point. Jim, has there ever been any thought to expanding your trails out into the, the farm fields and setting up a trail system along the edge of the woods outside of the agriculturally um, tilled yeah, I mean, property? A, a, a good part of that thought is mainly in my own head and not, <laughs> not anybody else's, but uh, that's, a, that's a possibility. And, and uh, when we do our winter walks, we go down through the field. Um, and there is some, there is a wooded uh, strip along the swamp that would be perfect for a trail uh, right. in most places. And, and uh, you know, I think eventually uh, the Anderson, all, most of that is owned by Anderson, right. except, except for the part way down at the end, that's, that's the turf farm. Um, but that would certainly make a lot of sense. Is that worth adding as a potential suggestion or recommendation yeah sure why not yeah i want to get ahead of ourselves if you haven't talked to the farmer yeah and i haven't really i and i have to talk to them about about cover crops and stuff too so uh it, it may it may be too soon to talk about that okay obviously they would have concerns you know yeah um, about yeah. people walking out there and you know that kind of thing and or getting access to the crops but um, I was looking at the aerials the other day and it just seemed to make yeah oh yeah a yeah. lot of sense if there was a way of doing that and and we own the, our freshet parcel um, has that 25 foot um, gate leg or flagpole whatever you want that comes out on Elm Street and I'm looking to improve that so you can go straight through there to the swamp that would connect up for it with a trail along the swamp so Mm -hmm. That is a, a potential. Okay. Peter, I just sent you a, uh, the updated map of the wood parcel. Okay. We just came up uh, with a new map for the GMTT for that, that parcel. So I just Great. sent that to you. Thank you. Okay. The uh, wolf parcel on Hartford Avenue um, going out into the Folly Brook nature area. I think that's a, just a very short, stretched now yeah, so technically peter the folly brook natural area is on the other side of Goff brook i mean uh, folly brook which you can't get to from there without uh paddling um but anyway that our wolf parcel and doesn't really have a trail we kind of hack away at it a little bit when i when we do our winter walk but there's possibility but it, it does go out into that little area where there's a bench to sit on and, and observe the cove from the other side. So expanding it any further um, is impossible because of the, the, the brook or and the wetlands or? Well, um, you, you can actually, what we do when we do our walk is we come go down and come out the uh, Eversource uh, uh, right of way before you get to Route 15. Okay. And I know people, uh, when, when uh, Tom DeMille lived there and they kept horses, they used to, they had a trail that they maintained uh, with their horses and uh, people were, you know, wish with, that we would do something like that. It's possible, it's, it's, it's uh, that's really low. So anytime the water comes up just a little bit, it's, uh, it's underwater, but. Okay. It's, it's kind of interesting to get out there next to the brook, so. All right, so it has some potential then. Okay. Yeah, lots uh, of beaver activity out there. Yes, uh, 21 is Tifton Road. That is actually uh, almost across the street from the town hall parking lot. Uh, it's a uh, right of way which the kids use to walk through. Um, you would think it's part of uh, the uh, homeowners um, ho residential properties there, uh, but there's a path worn through there that the kids use. It was it was identified in the safe routes to school. Uh, whether it's worth you know formalizing or not, but the kids do use it as a cut through there. Isn't that sort of parallel 
when when you say use it a, is that does that go north from Church Street or just south toward the school? Uh, yes, it goes it goes north from off of Church Street yeah. into that into that neighborhood. So it's sort of parallel to what the school. Uh, Charles Wright uh, has a path through there too, right? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Similar. Similar idea. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, I, I think this one was was yours. Ridgecrest Park. Yeah, that's off of Jordan Lane. Yep. So I think this was just improving the access points to get into the park. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, there's rights of way on the south and yep. east sides of that park. Okay. Kevin, where is that park? Uh, south of Jordan Lane, east of Ridge. Uh, it may be adjacent to the parking lot to the old uh, state facility on the car corner of Jordan and Ridge that's being developed into apartments. Yes, yep. Yeah, it's tucked away behind houses and behind 170 Ridge Road. You wouldn't, most people don't know it's back there. Okay. So um, is it really needed? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at that, so I'll, I'll probably look at that. I, I, it, it's public access, the, the two strips that Kevin's recommending. I don't know what they're, do you, do you recall what the condition is, Kevin? I don't. I didn't look at it closely. I was looking at it more as an inventory than a everything on the list needed something. Okay. So it's really not a trail. It's just improving the access uh, to the park. Okay, um, there's a stretch of the Heritage Way along Oxford Street that uh, needs a, a little TLC. Uh, Kevin, I think 24 was one of yours as well, Olney Road. You muted yourself, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, Olney and I think Edward Street as well. There's uh, some rights of way segments of rights of way over there between two or three streets like um, Dale, Dix, and Brimfield, I think. Uh, some of them need to be preserved and others would take quite a bit of work because they're either overgrown or they've been adopted by neighbors. Okay. I'll have to look at those. Uh, we have, we've obviously got the trail for the 1860 reservoir down at uh, Highland Street. Um, is there a need for parking down there? There, there is a parking, sort of a parking space as you, as you go in where, where you can launch a kayak from. I don't know how much that needs to be improved, but there is, uh, spade, say, three cars, maybe, two, okay. three cars. Okay. So there's yeah. a, it's, not, it's not just one. It's, it's a, you could get a couple of cars in there. I okay. think so, yeah. And All I right. don't think it, get used, it gets used very often. Right, that's why I was thinking if one or two cars can be there, that's probably adequate for the demand generated there. You know, last year when I, I went there with uh, my car, I barely was able to make it in. Uh, you know, I mean, it's good for a truck that has a high wheelbase, but because there's so many sort of uh, valleys there, um, if, if you're intending on having vehicles in there, I would suggest maybe something could you know, level it off a little bit, perhaps. Okay. Uh, this next one, I think, is the back entrance to uh, the Pitkin Center. Probably wouldn't be considered a trail, um, but just a pit back entrance uh, for pedestrians to Pitkin Center. Okay, this next one uh, is, um, if you know where the town uh, mulches uh, the leaves that they pick up in the fall, so there's a road that runs all the way back up into there and then ultimately connects uh, with um, Russell Road uh, that comes out to the, the ridge, the park that Newington acquired a couple of years back up on the top of the ridge there. Kevin, that's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay. Is that, is that, is that 
have a gate or did a while ago? So you so put there's a gate about two thirds, three quarters of the way up of the hill before you actually get to Russell Road. Yeah, so I mean, who owns that gate? I don't know. I believe it's related to the quarry. Derek, Derek, do you know? Sorry, what was the question? Is that uh, public right away, town right away? Do you know if that whole, what the legal status is? I think we uh, we leased the land from uh, Balf back there. Uh, I think at some point it becomes private. Uh, there is a portion of it that is public. And like you said, there is a, a lot on the south side that we do lease from Paul. Okay. That, that, could, that could connect into the cemetery, right? Yeah, you could, I mean, if you, you could go, there's a gate on the back of the cemetery, I think it's their maintenance area, but I mean, it connects the park in, uh, you know, in Newington, the open space in Newington, all the way through to Cedar Cemetery. So it has some decent connectivity and most people don't even know about it. you, plus you've got a, you know, a quarry back there, which is kind of an interesting, not something you see every day. But I don't think the access to the, the gate to the cemetery is never open. It's always padlocked. Yeah, I would imagine so. I, uh, I scaled that one time with my son, but I wouldn't recommend <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know if I would admit that in public, you know. And, and we are we are recording this too. <laughs> the statute of limitations is over, so I'm all I'm good. Uh, just looking just looking at our GIS mapping, it looks like there is right away that extends from Berlin Turnpike and then along the town line south back to Russell Road. So it does appear that there is a public right of way through that okay. area. So it's got some potential then. All right, let's move The on lower here. end of Russell Road, um, right around where uh, the pet place, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the Humane the Society. Cat place. Humane the Society, humane. thank you. <laughs> uh, right around there, uh, Newington has designated a greenway that goes off into the woods Right. Uh, over the hill and down, down. I, I don't know if they're going to do anything with it, but uh, if they did, that would be an awesome connection. Yeah. I think there's actually a trail there, Kevin, that goes up to Cedar Mountain. Oh, nice. Okay, that'd be cool. A mountain bike trail or a hiking walking trail? I think it's a hiking trail. Yeah. Uh. That'll be fun to check out sometime. Yeah. Ooh, field trip, field trip. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's uh, move on. Number 28, uh, there's a trail at Highcrest School from the school down to the, some of the ball fields. Um, obviously, we've got the section of Great Meadows, Ro Great Meadows Road uh, as part of the Heritage Way. We've also got the Elm Street extension, not officially part of the Heritage Way, but uh, is uh, uh, the gravel portion as well that people do use. Uh, we've got- A lot of people are using that these days, Peter. Yep, definitely. So, definitely. Going back to Highcrest School, well, I mean, obviously it's too soon to put the Keisha Farm on that, but I'd love to see a trail uh, go through the wetlands and come out uh, through the, uh, the uh, big part of that wetlands is owned by the uh, golf club. Um, and come out to prospect somehow. Some, some of you, you uh, trail guys uh, want to get up there sometime. We've got Tom Brown and, and go scope that out. Might be a good uh, uh, off-road uh, mountain bike trail. Okay. There is a town right-of-way that goes from behind the school to up to uh, Blueberry Street. Uh, I don't know if you have that uh, listed separately on here or not, Peter. I don't. I don't think it made the. Uh, I, I because I think the way you had it um, laid out, Kevin. There's a pretty significant wetlands through there, and the trail. Oh would, yeah, it would. 
it go right through the middle bear. of it. Yeah. It would be a bear. Just Pretty much of the jungle. Or... Yeah. Jungle going up to Blueberry or whatever that street is up there. Yeah. But that, that actually goes through the Keisha farm parcel, doesn't it? Or just beyond it or something? Maybe. Uh, back, back where the I barn is? I don't think me. it does. Could be. Okay. Um, I've added the Goodwin College uh, trails on the other side of the river uh, over in the meadow um, as part of the trail system. Uh, it does go through Weathersfield. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So we got added... a nice picture of, uh, of the that end of the Goodwin College trail with a fancy sign on it waiting yes. for the state to finish the bridge. We own all of what, 100 feet of that trail? It's so funny. You're entering East Hartford, you're entering Weathersfield, you're entering Glastonbury. Don't blink and you'll miss uh, Weathersfield. Honestly, yeah. God, but it's a nice trail. Yes. It is a wonderful trail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've added the uh, section of on the sort of the north end of Main, uh, north end of uh, Hartford Avenue, uh, which would uh, connect up into the South Meadows along the riverfront as a uh, future future uh, recommendation. We've added our beloved rail trail that is now actively being used for freight that we were talking about at the beginning of the meeting. So we'll keep that placeholder. Um, this number Peter, 34. Yep. Let, let me just uh, interject a, a dream of mine because between uh, Mill Street and Maple Street is a couple of hundred feet wide uh, property, mostly, mostly owned by Eversource. And uh, I imagine uh, uh, solar panels all the way up this right of way, and as well as a as an access road for Eversource to service their wires and stuff like that. Seems like if you were going to do the uh, the rail trail, that would be the first section uh, would come out next to. Uh, well, end up at Marshall's Plaza on the backside, but come out next to the. Uh, Mill Point condominiums. Okay. I mean, if, if the if the rail was still, you know, used for freight or other rail, there's a potential to kind of wind a trail through backside of private properties and that kind of thing. It would be a, yeah. a bear in terms of uh, right of way acquisition and and all of that. But uh, as an alternative to the rail trail, there is a potential. That you could have a dedicated, um, yeah, route. I mean, especially this section because it's so wide. You know, you right. know, there's very few uh, other properties besides Eversource. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of invasive species. I'd love to see that taken care of too. Okay, um, thirty-four. There is a very long. Uh, stretch of what is now open space that the town acquired as from the DOT many years ago that runs from Two Rod Highway all the way back behind all those properties on the south end of town and comes out on Highland Street. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever been back in there, but it would seem to me to be an ideal uh, trail opportunity. Um, and it's it runs all of that way. So it's a significant property and a significant stretch and most people don't even know that it's back there. So I've added that as a potential. And Peter, could you share that as uh, on a map for us to see? Sure, I, um, maybe if I, hey Derek, if, if you could, are you still out there, Derek? Yes. Maybe if you, you, had, you said earlier you had the GIS pulled up Maybe you could pull it up and we can, I can let you um, co-host. Yeah. Let me see what I, if we can do that. Okay. You are now officially co-host. Got a promotion. Yep. <laughs> All right. So this will uh, stop your screen sharing, and I'll I can yep. share. Yeah, we can come back. 
You know the property I'm talking about, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I was just going to ask. Where are we going? All the way uh, south. Go all the way down to the end of Highland. Uh, there's Kitchen Rock Farm. On the Rocky Hill line. That's what I was talking about right there. So you see it on the left there? Yep. I, oh, 291 corridor, the yeah, old 291. Yeah, the old 290, see right there, that comes all the way out to Highland, it runs all the way back through, through there, it widens out. Wow. And you've got a couple of other open space parcels that are mostly wet, but you could have connections from those neighborhoods as well. And it wow. comes, all, comes out at, at um, on two red. Is that close to France Street up there? In Rocky yeah, Hill? yeah. Right? Is it really? Yeah, because we, we were just up north, uh, north Road. We just opened up North Road to uh, Off Road Trail. Mm. And North Road goes to Cromwell. How about that? Wow. Pretty large. What, yeah, it's very large. What is what is the Not purple really line? Well either. I don't know what the purple line, purple line that, is. That uh, uh, looks like a state easement that runs along the north side of the parcel. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never been back. In there's the not there's not much in the way of wetlands or no floodplain on the on the property either. Right. Wow. Looks like a good place for a highway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. It was at one point. <laughs> Would make a nice right bike, pa nice uh, pedestrian yeah. kind of bike pathway. Yeah, mountain bike trails. I mean, it's got yeah those that kind of potential. And Mike, mountain bike pathways are really popular right now. So yeah, it looks like it's yeah, it's got access right at the town line. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we want to we want to keep that in then, I guess. Yes. Wait a second. Okay. Give it back to you, Peter. Yep, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay, so where were we? Tw uh, 34, um, 35. So the next couple of recommendations are related to the um, Wilkes Farm properties. We've got three different Wilkes Farm properties. So uh, there is uh, one of them that is uh, adjacent to where Old Reservoir Road ends. Um, so uh, we're suggesting that there's an opportunity to connect um, Wilkes Farms with Old Reservoir Road through some sort of a uh, trail system. We've talked about doing this on Wilkes Farms in the past. So let's memorialize, memorialize this by keeping that as a recommendation. You've also got two other Wilkes Farm properties that are back to back and, and one of them then connects up with uh, the Tanglewood Preserve open space. So you have an opportunity. Uh, the Tanglewood is um, got a lot of wetlands so it would have to be done um, carefully but, and Wilkes has some wetlands as well. So it would uh, also um, need to be done with some care but you could have a significant um, trail through both of those properties and then connecting with Tanglewood Preserve as well. Where is the Tanglewood Preserve just, just kind of behind Wilkin Hill? Um, you want to screen share again, Derek? We'll pull that up, pull those up. And while he's doing that, Peter, does it make sense to think about the kind of Wilkes Farm as potential like a cycle cross training center um, or just kind of a cycle cross trail? We have to be careful when Wilkes was, we used some state fund funding um, when we acquired uh, the Wilkes uh, properties and they have some restrictions as to how intensively uh, mm. we, we can use them um, okay. for recreational purposes. So that would have to, I would imagine trails are pretty passive, but if we start um, turning them into facilities of any specific nature, we may, uh, but it's worth, um, it's worth investigating to see how far 
uh, we we could go. So the the two Wilkes properties that I was referring to are off of Willow. Um, let's see. Let me get my bearings here. Yeah, that's that's the that's, uh, the, that's the one to connect with Old Reservoir. Yes. Um, the other is to the north. Peter, how many of those houses got built down there at the corner? Uh, Whipperwill? Yeah. Uh, Whipperwill, yeah. there's five or six built in there now. Right in the middle of the wetlands. I think. Here we go. So you can see the, the long rectangular prop right there. Um, it does have um, some brooks, and some wetlands going through it. So you, once again, you'd have to uh, work uh, through that, whether it's bridges or whatever it might might be. Uh, but you can see how significant and how wide that property is relative to the neighborhood. And then as you go to the east across the street, uh, you've got the other Wilkes property, which probably has more, more limitations. You can see it's got uh, wetlands and flood zone as well, but then it opens up again and is dry. And then that long corridor that runs north south is, uh, I think to the north there is the Tanglewood Preserve. So that has some, uh, obviously some limitations uh, as well, but they've got portions of it that are dry. What about that stretch along uh, Collier Brook there mm -hmm. to the south of that? Right. Who owns that? That is part of, uh, it's a conservation easement that goes with those townhouses down there. Well, I'm trying to think of the name of them right there. Um, yeah. It, it's all wetlands, you can see. Yeah, yeah. So it's really got some challenges. Collier even. Farms, isn't it? Yes, yes Collier, Collier Farms. Collier, Collier Farms, right. yep. exactly. And then, that, and then that connects right up with the uh, the church. The church and the golf club property, yep. which backs up to Keisha Farms. Right. But that's also, you can see how wet that is as well. I took a walk through there, to, started to penetrate in there, and the, there were so many deer tracks. It looked like there was a crowd, even though you couldn't see any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you if we could work a trail system through the golf course property, you you'd have something. But obviously that's um it's a whole nother matter. Dangerous. Right. So, yes. Yes. Well, I'm ta talking about that that huge part of of wetlands that is nowhere near any fairways. Um. So right. Yeah. Yeah, you'd the have golf to build property wraps all the way around. Yes, it does. They own some of that. Yep. It wraps almost that whole yellow outline is is all uh, golf club. Um, behind the church, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, behind the church, but wrapping around between the church and the and the houses on Collier Road. You can see the property line where where Wilkes ends right in the middle there. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Derek. Okay. All right. Let's see. Get back to where we were here. I think you might have disabled me from being the host now, Derek. See if you can figure that out. Why throw him under the bus? Maybe you did it. It could be. <laughs> that would have been my first guess. Let me see if I can, I can un. Uh... Try that. There we go. Got it. Okay, um, uh, Beaverbrook Park, uh, as you may know, we received a, 
a bunch of state funding um, recently to initiate a uh, plan and improvements for Beaver um, Brook Park. So there's potential to uh, create and enhance the park there. Uh, and we would hope that there would be trails in the park associated with that funding. Uh, that remains to be seen, but it is a it was recommended in the Beaverbrook Park master plan that they did some time ago. Um, there is a uh, short little connection off of Robbins Drive that could easily connect that whole neighborhood uh, to the Heritage Way. Uh, so I think that has a has some merit. Uh, could be a low cost, but um, goes right through a former street right of way, which would tap right into the heritage way sort of behind the high school there um, and allow that entire neighborhood to come down to the end of the street and enjoy the, the heritage way. Kevin, I think you talked about this other one, uh, Edward Street connection a little bit earlier. So we talked about that. And I think the last one is here. Obviously there's a big portion of Cedar Hill Cemetery uh, that is in Weathersfield, not specifically uh, designated uh, as a trail system, but many, many, many people, and as well as the cemetery, uh, encourage uh, tours, folks to walk and enjoy um, in the cemetery, which is uh, really also in essence an arboretum as well. So, um, so we've we've added that to the list. improving the. Uh, uh, walk between the Goodwin Park and uh, and the entrance to the cemetery would be a big factor. Yes. Yep. Okay. I think that was the last um, last one. Did we miss any uh, trails that um, or ideas one for trails? One that comes to mind, Peter, is the connection between the two sections of Old Reservoir Road. I'm not sure if that's what you meant by 35 or not. Yeah, I think I think I was thinking the um, the Wilkes the Wilkes Farms Trail connecting to Old Reservoir Road uh, would would be part of that. It would be very challenging to connect uh, the 1860 Reservoir up into. Old Reservoir Road, because there are several homes that are literally right on the on the edge of uh, the 1860 Reservoir. Um, okay. And you'd have to literally go right almost through their backyards. So, um, I mean, if you brought the reservoir reservoir trail out to Old Reservoir Road, and then for that stretch, it would be on road, and you kept on going straight. But even that area in through there is is wetlands as well. So it would be it would be challenging. It's not impossible, but and there is a utility uh, corridor that runs through there. That so it, it definitely has potential, and I, that's what I was uh, considering when we were talking about connecting Old Reservoir Road to the Wilkes Farm. Okay. Road. Yep. Yeah, that's the part that would it would wrap around the southwest part of the reservoir. I, I wondered if there would be enough space there. Um, what I was trying to bring up is uh, there's a right of way that maybe was planned to be a road eventually, but it's not right now. Mm -hmm. A road like res uh, right of way between the two sections of Old Reservoir Road. It's uh, got at least some trees on it. It might be heavily forested. I haven't been out there, but it would definitely need to be cleared or semi cleared or something, even to put a foot trail. But it is a, a really awesome looking connection to at least have on an inventory. Okay. Looks like they, they built a road through there almost, except there was a little corner of Wilkes Farm that the Wilkeses wouldn't sell. And uh, they built this road right in the middle of the wetlands, filled in the wetlands. That would never fly these days. But uh, grandfathered, it's there. It was before, before my time, before Derek's time. Yeah, I know. Uh, Peter, I didn't know. I don't know whether we had, we passed it, but the, I know we discussed the um, the Broad Street Green. I don't know, like the basically a loop trail, whatever you want to call that. The I call it the Desire Trail because it's like when people put their footprints, like they show you where the trails should go, and basically, I guess it's a the circular trail. 
So you're talking about along the edge of the Broad Street Green where people walk, right? Yeah. Along that whole side. Yep. I got you. Okay. Any others? Okay. Hearing none, we'll uh, we'll move on here. Oh, going backwards. Sorry. Figure this out eventually here. Sure what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So as I said at the beginning, we're getting near the end of this uh, process and it's probably, uh, we need to start planning for how we're gonna wrap this up and uh, what additional community engagement uh, we're going to uh, initiate. As I said, uh, at the beginning, at the end of the day, this plan will be adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, and I would uh, think along the way, we need to uh, make sure the town council uh, is aware of the various recommendations. Um, for those of you who have been involved in this from the beginning, we had a pretty elaborate um, public uh, open house and workshop um, in late October, a couple of years back, which I thought was uh, a great way to kind of start this process. So I, I, I don't know how elaborate we wanna get on the back end of this process, but um, I thought that was a uh, very well done evening and I thought the public um, got a lot out of it. Um, so I wanna throw that out there. Do you think as we wrap this process up, we should do something similarly, uh, set up stations, allow people to comment on uh, the individual recommendations as we've broken them down here in the plan, or should we stick with the more traditional, you know, public meeting, public hearing where we present all the recommendations and uh, allow people uh, to com comment on them. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to talk about. And then secondly, we need to circle back with the Planning and Zoning Commission probably before we do that, just to make sure um, what we've recommended uh, is in line with what they were hoping for us to do. So that would probably be the first step. Um, and obviously an open house or a workshop of any significance would take some planning and would take some time for us to pull together. But I wanna, I wanna throw both of those out uh, and, and see what, what your folks think. I think we can do an in-person thing by June. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, if we do the open house workshop, um, it would have to be something in person. I think June might be too ambitious. Um, but Peter, I liked the open house that we did. I thought we had a lot more participation uh, because of it. So I, if we could do that, I think it would be great. I agree. I thought that that was really good. Could we structure it so that people come staggered time and only allow so many people in circulating around for, uh, I don't know, something like that? Uh, yeah, I guess anything's possible. You know, how effective it would be if you really only had, you know, if there is a certain dynamic, you know, that comes from a lot of people and, you know, um, banging ideas off of each other and yeah, so um, I just don't know how far into the future, if we pushed it off, we would have to wait before, you know, we're back to any normalcy. And I don't know if there's a, a virtual way of doing it, um, you know, effectively uh, as well. Um, th there may be, there may be some technological ways where we could put maps, you know, on a screen and, but, uh, so there are several apps, Peter, where you can do like one big room and then just automatically divvy up all of the participants into smaller rooms. So you would have like anywhere from five to eight people in each of the smaller rooms to have 
more intimate conversations, similar to like we did at the open house where you were sitting at a table. Okay. Um, so you could do it virtually. It would be, you know, one big one, then breaking into smaller rooms and then coming back to a bigger room and then breaking into smaller rooms again, if you wanted to do that two or three times. Okay. Well, obviously we, we would have to have people in those rooms kind of leading the dialogue, right? I mean, really you could ask this group right. to be, you know, sit at each one, sit at a different table. Mm -hmm. Could you do a hybrid something or other since limiting the amount of people that could arrive physically, but I've heard several people say the future is in hybrid because everybody likes the Zoom. You can show up easier. I don't know. What about doing it outside or something like that? Yeah. You know, as the weather is nice, knock on wood, you get a good night or um, early early evening before it gets dark. I think you'd have to have alternative dates in case it rains. <laughs> yes, definitely. But maybe in Cove Park or, um, you know, someplace where people can ride their bikes. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a great idea. Huh. If you could, if you can't get in person, there's also video. You know, you could uh, speak, do you know, do a presentation or PowerPoint, and turn that PowerPoint with your graphics into a video. That would be more of a one-way thing. We're looking for feedback. Though. Mm. Well, if you directed people to after the video or after the presentation to a, a survey opportunity where they can submit comments. Um, I think you're right, though, Peter. It's the dynamic that you want to get of people mm -hmm. nodding to each other in agreement or disagreement, whatever. Right. I think the outdoor option is, uh, is the most appealing. <clears throat> whatever it is you're going to have to have volunteers that are comfortable with being there and uh i know uh you know some of the groups that i'm in that's that's a difficult sell that you know good idea now but who's gonna you know man that one section right uh, a woman, as, that person that as, <laughs> as well as you need you need the public and you know they need to feel confident enough about going out and interacting with other people we have to kind of wait and see what happens with the virus. Yeah, need to think about it. Maybe, maybe I'll research, you know, if there, is, there are creative ways that other places have done kind of hybrids um, to see what we can come back Sounds with. Sounds like a lot of work for you, Peter. Uh, but if you do get exposed to a more modern platform, maybe it would be useful in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, people we're... were a lot of people were caught, were uh, comfortable with the farmer's market last summer. So yes. you think with so many of us getting our shots already, that this summer would be just as good. All right. Yeah, maybe if we set up a bunch of tables, we space them apart. We let, you know, just a couple of people at each table yeah. come, come along. You know, somebody mans each table. We have the maps out. We have the recommendations. You know, you explain it real quickly. Um, Okay, we'll think further about it. So, uh, so, but let's, so the first, before we got to that, we would obviously wanna have uh, had a conversation with the Planning and Zoning Commission. So, um, so I'm thinking that maybe we should be talking about that. I mean, that they're still meeting, meeting virtually. I think I could easily put together a, a PowerPoint that summarizes, uh, you know, how we got to this point and what the major recommendations are and, um, get some feedback um, from them um, through the normal, or I shouldn't say normal, but through the uh, virtual meeting we've been having, the new normal. Um, so I think that that's, uh, that's easily done. And uh, with all the presentations we've done, I can easily uh, piece together 
you know, a bunch of slides and uh, uh, schedule schedule that in the near future with the Planning and Zoning Commission. And let's see, I mean, I still have some, you know, work still to do on the plan. So, you know, I think a June date for a public meeting would be ambitious anyway. So, and maybe the more we push it out, the more open, you know, things become. Um, so, okay. So I will, um, I'll have to look at the schedule for May and what's going on with applications and things like that. And, and see if we can um, stay on, on the, at least a May timeline, maybe the second meeting in May, which gives me time to pull, pull things together for the planning mm -hmm. and zoning presentation. And obviously we would, we would invite everybody who's participated to you know, sit in on that and uh, comment as well. Okay, and then we'll, we'll leave the you know, formal public hearing, the adoption process kind of up in the air, depending upon what happens with the, the ideas we have about a public, some public meetings. Peter, the, um, the police department hasn't been able to, or hasn't attended uh, quite a few meetings. And I feel like what I learned early was that they at least used to have quite a lot to say about changes with intersections and things like that. I'm wondering if we could uh, try to make sure that they're present at the April 8th meeting, because I think that would probably expose them to a lot of the kinds of things that are being contemplated that affect traffic flow, which I think is their main interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe uh, Derek can uh, better try to say what I'm trying to say, and, uh, but maybe, maybe they aren't as involved with what to say about traffic anymore. I don't know. Uh, I think Derek and I did talk about that, and we do plan on inviting them to the April uh, 8th meeting. They have, they've had some uh, personnel uh, change changeovers, so I think during during uh, our planning process, they've had maybe three um, traffic assignees. Um, so, but your point about getting them uh, to the table to talk about all of the other recommendations is a good one. And, and we sh it's, it's been on my list of things to do to schedule something with them and make sure, you know, we're not coming out of the blue with some of these recommendations. But, uh, but Derek, yes, I think both you and I did talk about having them at the April 8th meeting. Yeah, they, they were involved in the um, selection of the intersections that we picked for the UConn students uh, to look at. And uh, yeah, I think that makes sense to uh, have them come back and and provide some feedback at, at this point where we are. Okay, let's move on. There's a couple more, couple more slides to do, and we'll let you guys get on with your night here. If I can get this technology to work here. Come on, it's not letting me advance here. I'm not sure what the problem is. The technology guys are trying to tell you something. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Oh, next. Yeah. Yeah, it won't let me. Nothing's happening when I when there I hit go. that. Yeah, it doesn't want to work here. You might have to stop your uh, screen share and start again. You know. Yeah, let me do that and then see if that helps. That's not even working. Hmm. Yep. You're yeah. in a funk here, Peter. Yeah, I'm locked down here. So, um, yeah, Peter, let me try and see if yeah. I can share. Okay, or, or yours. All right. That'll teach me to share my screen. Nice. Okay, so let me stop now. At the new Weathersfield Town Hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me try and share the screen again. No, it's not letting me do anything. Might be trying to tell us something. Yep. 
All right. Let me uh, I'll just talk you through a few things just to keep you up to date. So um, in terms of project updates, um, so we're going to do a, we were going to schedule a public information meeting on the old Weathersfield public improvements. It's supposed to be last night. We've pushed that off, Derek, I think until April 22nd. Yes, Thursday right. night. Yeah, Thursday night, April 22nd. If you wanna um, mark that in your calendar, we're doing a public information session on the specific improvements in old Weathersfield. The plans have evolved a little bit, so we wanna make sure the next uh, iteration of the plans has been looked at uh, by the public. Um, we talked about having the uh, UConn senior engineering students at your next meeting, which is April 8th, which we talked about. Uh, the old Weatherfield shopkeepers are planning uh, bicycles on Main Street, which will be an event focused on decorating bicycles up and down Main Street for the entire month of May. They are planning other uh, bike and pedestrian related activities uh, along with um, uh, that display. So it looks like it, that is really starting to uh, come together. Um, we attended, Ann Hartman and I attended a Rocky Hill plan implementation uh, committee meeting to talk about complete streets and our, our work and our experience with complete streets. I thought that was a, a nice meeting uh, to have. And uh, we've started a dialogue now, which I think will, will bear fruit down the road. Um, we were, we were made aware that the Capital Region Council of Governments through the Connecticut Department of Transportation has um, potential funding for what they're calling transportation planning studies. We had mentioned at the last meeting that um, there's a potentially a group being formed to kind of revisit the whole Silas Dean Highway master plan. Um, so we were thinking that maybe um, we could pursue funds to look at the entire Silenstein Highway corridor and potentially the idea of traffic calming and other uh, streetscape related improvements as part of that study. Rocky Hill did tell us that they were approached by uh, the Connecticut Department of Transportation about the idea of looking at their section of the Silenstein Highway for what they call a road diet, series of road diet recommendations. Um, they were looking at uh, state highway corridor yeah. sections throughout the state that met certain criteria. They had not approached us because I'm thinking that our stretch of the Silestein Highway did not meet the criteria because of the heavier uh, traffic volumes. But nevertheless, we are attempting to reach out to the DOT to see if that idea uh, has any um, potential to be pursued. The idea would be to also incorporate uh, the Rocky Hill stretch of the Silestein Highway. So it really has not gone anywhere yet. It's still in the talking stages, but I just wanted to make you aware that uh, of that potential um, as we go forward. The town would have to come up with some matching funds in order to, to you know, fund the study. So there would be some obligations on us um, financially as well. So it's not just a, a full grant. There is local match requirements. And then lastly, uh, Kevin and his associates in Rocky Hill are investigating getting the uh, Heritage Way uh, bike path uh, designated as a Connecticut Greenway. Um, there is a DEEP uh, nomination process. Uh, you have to submit an application. You have to have it uh, supported by the local um, communities. Uh, that is due April 30th. Uh, do you want to say any more uh, about that, Kevin? Uh, I think I, I can say that uh, Ed's actually uh, from uh, Walk by Rocky Hill has uh, drafted what is end up being most of the application. Um, I need to work with him in the next few days, and we, we should be able to have something for you to take a, a look at, Peter, by early next week. Okay. I think it uh, needs some town council um, action as well in order to, so we need to talk about that and getting that scheduled as well. Right, I, I found out from DEP that um, even though this would be considered a regional 
application because it's more than one town filing together. We don't have to do that, but uh, DEP didn't discourage it, and they and they said that uh, they love the idea of connectivity and more things connecting the better. So I think it's uh, it would be better in their minds if we'd submitted jointly. I don't think uh, the coordinator was even aware of the connection in the meadows. Um, so I think jointly is a good idea, and, and they're pretty flexible about the approvals. If we get both town councils to sign on, we should be fine. But if we get uh, manage to get a letter of support from, say, Krog or some or uh, uh, Great Meadows Conservation Trust, uh, something that has a uh, a larger footprint, uh, that would be helpful to the application. Okay. You're going to copy us all on that, right, Kevin? On that yes. application? Yeah. Good. We have a board meeting next week too. So. What day is that? Thursday. Cool. Jim, why don't I send you the uh, the description, then you could then you could uh, uh, get an understanding of what it is. That'll be good. Yeah. And Peter, we should add him to the Heritage Commission agenda as well. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Because you know how powerful that Heritage Commission that carries a lot of weight. Hey, we managed to get a lot of money in town. Don't don't knock us. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. <laughs> okay, uh, Derek. Anything else that you wanted to update anyone on about some of the other projects you're working on? Um, well, I mean, it hasn't been that long, so I don't have too much on the project side. I, I was going to say I did meet with the advisory committee for people with disabilities since we last met. Um, I try to meet with them at least every year or two just to talk about our sidewalk program, um, get some feedback from them if there's particular areas that they have concerns with. Um, you know, generally there was nothing specific, but they were very happy to hear that this group is meeting and that we're working on what we are as far as, you know, pedestrian uh, access, mobility, um, the ADA transition plan that will be part of this. Um, so they, they were just very happy about that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is that uh, historically, I think, I think we've talked about this, that property owners are responsible for maintenance and repairs of their sidewalks that abut the property, um, unless damage is caused by a town tree or a town contractor. Uh, so for a lot of years now, the town's required uh, replacement when there's an issue, um, even if the slabs were in good condition and they were offset and it was a trip hazard, we required them to be removed and replaced. Um, so we were trying over the last year, year and a half, some different methods. One of them is slab jacking. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's also known as slab raising, where we where a contractor, if, if in cases where we have slabs that are in very good condition, it's just that they're at their offset, the joints, they can come in, pour holes in the, in the concrete and pressure grout um, material underneath the slabs and raise them to level everything off. Um, I guess the town used that many years ago and they got away from it because they had some problems with it. But, uh, you know, reevaluating it with the new, the newer methods, the newer materials, we haven't had any issues. So the reason why I'm telling you is I'm, I'm planning to make a notice. We did inform town council uh, on Monday that uh, the intent is to open that up to allow residents to do that now. The cost of that work is about 60% less costly than replacement. So, you know, slab replacement per slab is usually around $250. This, this costs about $100 a slab. So I'm hoping with, by allowing that when, when it's applicable, that it will just encourage people to, you know, make repairs if it's less costly and easier to do. So that's something we're gonna utilize on, uh, from our end, we're gonna have a contract for that type of work and also open it up to residents. Most instances, that's not gonna that's not gonna work. Usually, the slabs are cracked or there's problems. But there are times when they're you know this would work and it would be an easier and cheaper solution for everyone. But Derek, if this committee were sent a letter, you know, um, approve uh, what do I want to say, approving that or recommending that that be adopted, will that help? You know, I spoke to council on Monday and they you know they not and said that, that they were fine with this. So I don't think I need anything at this point. Okay. Uh, formally, right. we're just we're just gonna try and get the word out there. Um, I'm, I'm probably gonna put an announcement up on the website so the blast email goes out and just try and get the word out there. 
we also, when we issue notices to people saying, you know, you need to make a repair, we've added another category to say that that's an option they can investigate if they want to, if they want to go that route. So we're going to try and get the word out there uh, as best we can. Okay. Do they, have, Thanks. Do, they have to, do they have to use a special certain contractor or can they find other contractors who have that? There are only a few that do that type of work. Um, and we've, you know, we have experience with both. Well, the two I have experience with have been fine. Um, so yeah, they're, they're open, they're free like any contractor. Anytime we don't say you got to use this contractor, they're available. They can use whoever they would like. Um, although that person will come through, they'll get a license, a permit from the engineering department that gives us a chance to you know, verify they have all the correct, um, you know, documents for them to work in the right way. Okay. Derek, okay. would grinding be another option? Yeah, I've been, I've, I've had discussions with companies that do that. Um, Personally, I'm not a big fan of it uh, because what you what you end up doing is you know it depends on the significance of the trip hazard, but you ended up really you're taking out material, and making that slab that much thinner. Um, so that that is something else that you know maybe we would consider, but at this point I've kind of uh, been a little bit resistant to go in that direction. We, like I said, we were looking at this as another option first, um, but there again that is a that is a cheaper alternative, and if our goal is really to just improve safety throughout town, given that we have 113 miles of sidewalk, you know, that's something we might look at next and as a consideration. We haven't tried it. We probably try it ourselves first and see how it's coming out. And there, like you said, there might be certain applications where that, where that could help. The only reason I even thought to ask yeah. is I noticed uh, a stretch of it having been done along the Gough Brook shops on Celestine Highway I was riding along there and noticed that uh, a number of the edges had been ground down and it was, it was awesome. What it did to the structure, I couldn't tell you, but uh, it was really impressive. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I wasn't aware they did that. I mean, stay right away. Um, so they may have allowed that. Uh, the only other thing to, that I'm thinking of as we're talking is most sidewalks do not have steel reinforcement. The, the ones that do cross the driveways should have steel reinforcement. That would concern me in those locations just because now you're exposing the steel which is going to cause other problems um but you know you know as i said that's something we'll we'll, we'll consider maybe that's something as we you know get to finalizing our plan um you know these could be recommendations to follow up on chris was saying something that's in the plan as recommendations to help encourage um you know this work to get done as, as needed would be helpful thank you Anything else from anyone? Okay. Any uh, questions, follow up anyone has before, before we wrap it up? Okay. So our next meeting will be April 8th at 6.30. So I will send out uh, the appropriate invitations and uh, we will have our guests from UConn. Derek, I'm assuming they're gonna do a PowerPoint um, presentation as well. So we'll just figure out the logistics of that. Yes, well, we'll get in touch with them, Courtney. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, everybody, that's it for me. Anything else? Uh, all right, everybody have a, uh, a pleasant evening and we'll see you the next time. Thank Thanks you, again. Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Okay, guys. Thank you, Peter. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.